Hey Bubble Family, welcome back to the channel. <sighs> so in today's video, um, I'm going to talk about the latest goings on in regards to Amber Heard and <laughs> what she's getting up to, um, including the stuff with her lawyers. So um, I know that many of you have asked um, and again, I'll put the timestamp here if you want to skip the waffle. So many of you have asked um, in the emails, like uh, you'd like to send me some things. Um, so I'm going to today be putting up a PO box. Um, so you can, because a few people have sent me things and I've, and I've given out my home address. And obviously, you know, they've been lovely and respectful and, 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 and I'm sure that Pretty much everyone on this bubble family is very lovely and respectful, but it probably makes more sense to have a PO box. So then if people want to send me things like they've asked if they can send Arthur something um, or send me something, you know, if you'd like me to advertise something of yours on this channel, I'm very happy to do that. Um, I, yeah, so I will be setting that up today. Now. Um, the other thing as well is I apologize for not doing a video yesterday. I, my work is a bit crazy at the moment because it's actually, <gasps> da, 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 it is my birthday tomorrow. So I have taken some time off this week. So I will not be doing as many videos this week because I'm having a much needed break and enjoying my birthday week. I'm going to string it out because I'm a diva. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and my mom, if she was watching this, she would absolutely agree with me. I turn into like a birthday zilla <laughs> when it comes to my birthday. <laughs> um, so yes, I am. Ah, just it's really weird, you know, to think that next year is the big five zero, and that's really crazy because in my head I still feel like I'm very young. Um, and I probably kind of act young as well, which is why I think some people on the channel, like they call me girl. <laughs> I think they possibly think I'm a, I'm, well, I mean, obviously I am a girl, female. Um, but, um, but yeah, I think they think I'm younger than what I am. So it's, uh, it's quite funny and very flattering, but, but quite funny to me. So yes. Um, but though, to be fair over my birthday, I probably do act like that. So yeah. So yes. So, <laughs> so for any of you, like I say, um, so this week I'm going to, I'm going to do this video today. Um, and then I will be doing my live with Trev on Friday. Um, but that is the only videos I'm going to be doing this week, but next week, cause I know a lot of you have asked me whether or not about doing videos on Harry and Meghan's relationship, um, the stuff about Archie, um, so I will be doing that next week. So just bear with me, guys. I just want to take this time off this week and enjoy my birthday, spending time with friends and family and just taking a much needed break from, from work. So that being said, you know what to do. Grab your drink of choice. And as always, I've left mine downstairs because I'm rubbish. <laughs> so grab your drink of choice, whether it be tea, coffee, water, uh sparkling apple juice um pink grapefruit juice i actually quite like pink grapefruit juice um or whether it be a nice cocktail a uh, glass of pims vodka and lemonade because it is five o'clock somewhere let's dive right in Bubbles, welcome, welcome, welcome. As you can see, I am so very grateful. My channel is growing. We are growing as a community here, uh, keeping it respectful in the comments so you guys can all feel safe to come on and air your views, even if they differ from mine or somebody else's. Um, but you are amazing in keeping it respectful, making sure everyone doesn't feel alone here. Um, and I love that about this little community that we're building. So I am now at this point 15,000 
600 subscribers um, and we are growing. So thank you to everybody who has, uh, who is new here and to obviously, you know how I feel about you guys who stuck with me since the beginning. So yes, in today's video, Amber, Amber Heard. Well, it was inevitable, wasn't it really, that, that this person wasn't going to go away. So obviously I have, if you haven't seen it, um, I will probably add that video as a link on the end of this one in regards to the video that I've done in regards to Amber Heard and her behaviour. And as I have also stated that I believe, and again, not an official diagnosis, that I think she has most definitely a personality disorder um, and she is most definitely, um, I would say, got narcissism. And there's definitely, in, in almost, uh, in, a, in a way, I kind of feel there's some sociopathy there. And given the right environment, some psychopathy. You know, we're kind of definitely seeing that with the aggressive, kind of violent behaviour. So, of course, now what we've got here is, is somebody that can't let it go. So when we've spoken about Meghan and Harry in this narc revenge, like I say, which I will be touching on next week and what I think about all of that, you're seeing this now with Amber Heard. Because again, it's this uh, new interview, well, this snippet of an interview that's that's come out. Um, and in this, in this interview, she's basically, again, behaving as if she's a, a, a victim. But I'm cross, uh, you know, and and I'm and I feel frustrated and angry because whereas you've got Johnny Depp who has won this trial, albeit that yes, there was one incident where she got two million dollars because of what Adam Waldman said, and I think this was just uh, a bit kind of tactical uh, because I think that they sort of had to give her something. Um, and we have to go with facts. Now, I think it was about the fact that Adam Walburn suggested that she staged the penthouse um, to, again, add to the, the, the defamation of John of Johnny. Um, now, I, I absolutely believe this is something that she would have done, but there's no evidence to back this up. So, of course, I think logistically that is where they said, OK, we need to give her that one because this is kind of like a hearsay you know there's no evidence no proof that she's actually done that albeit we believe that is something that she would do because that's the character that we've seen from her you know setting up these photographs you know staging things so yeah it's it's not a it, it's not a long shot to say well she probably staged the the penthouse um but with no facts to back that up you know, I, I think that's why they sided with her on that particular one. So now you have the fact that literally the very next day, you have the fact that her lawyer, Elaine, um, went on uh, kind of Today Show, I think, and a pos maybe even Good Morning America. I'm not strictly sure of every single one that she went on, but she did. And she proceeded to drag in completely deflect from any questions that were asked of her and completely kept reiterating that this was really bad for women, which frustrates me no end because actually, no, it's not um, in regards to um, how they're saying it is in like, you know, because because Amber wasn't believed. This is a setback for all women. No, what it is is a setback for anyone that wants to come forward, um, especially a woman, um, because there's every chance that this has now damaged uh, somebody because of the way that Amber's behaved, you know, the fact that she's created these lies and these and setting every and staging this all up, allegedly. Um, and then not only that, it, I, I think that it's kind of created this um, knock on effect from that, you know, so you know, I do, you know, this whole thing of, you know, it's it's damaged women, you know, I think it's, it's done a lot of things. But I think what it's done is, is, is basically shown that someone is capable of going to court and lying under oath. Um, 
without any fear of bit of, of perjury or you know it's it's you know she you we've seen her do that and then have other people that are defending her lie like her sister so so then Elaine then proceeds to carry this kind of on by saying there was all this insurmountable evidence that was held back. And she reiterates about medical records, which is very misleading because actually it was therapist notes, which again is hearsay. Because as a therapist, I can only go on what my client tells me. Now, I know for a fact I have had clients that have lied you know, for their, for various reasons, you know, and at some points they get called out on it. And at times when a client is called out on it, they don't come back because for some reason they feel this need to have this, um, <clears throat> this validation from a professional, but most professionals will see through it. Um, and this is why we you know we work on body language and things like that, because we can, you know, you, you, you get to know your client first. So you find that baseline of kind of how they speak. Um, and then you can then, so then when lies start to come out, you kind of then start to go, okay, well, that's, that's going against kind of what you said back then. So I'm just curious as to why, you know, this, this story's changed, you know, what's, what's going on here, you know, and, and, and a lot of the time, you know, sometimes clients will come out of themselves and be like, you know, I, I felt afraid or, you know, I felt that I would be judged if I if I didn't say this version. And then, of course, you know, as a, as a therapist, you know, it's your place to then kind of, you know, softly, softly try and understand why they felt that need to do that. But when you're dealing with a narcissist, you're not going to have that because what they want is they want you to be on their side. They want you to believe them. So they will not care. You know, and even to the point, if you call them out, like I say, the chances are they won't come back, you know, and they will then get or get angry and very defensive. So therapist notes are not even, albeit that, yes, OK, you can bring them in um, to a court. And I think they were mentioned, but they, again, are just hearsay. This is why actual medical records from, say, a hospital, a doctor's um gynecologist or anything like that would be far better as proof that these injuries took place because they would have been documented evidence by another person that has no vested interest in buying into any lie or anything like that so you know whereas obviously where johnny had the medical evidence in regards to his finger and what was said and then the taped evidence as well she had zero medical evidence. Now, that's not to say that there are not people out there, and I do appreciate that not every abuse victim wants to come forward and go to a medical profession, professional. But when you're dealing with a level of injuries that at one point saying that, that there was a broken glass bottle inserted, to me, there's so... <laughs> I don't know how you would get through that without getting some medical treatment, you know. And like I say, the fact that we've seen, seen the fact that she's said that she was, uh, you know, hit multiple times in the face with, with Johnny's hand where he had rings on. But yet there's a photograph of her the next day. But according to her, just, a, a, you know, a, a bit of ice will take down that swelling. It wouldn't just be swelling. There would be cuts. There would be welts, you know, because, you know, and... So in my opinion, what is so terrible about this is that, again, my anger and frustration is that the media are giving her this airtime to consistently keep lying. You know, what is damaging is that you've got this woman who has been shown up in a court of law by a jury, not a judge, a jury, and they have all... Because all it took was one person to absolutely disagree, um, but they all unanimous, unanimously, <laughs> nearly slipped up on a word there, um, decided that she was not telling the truth. So, of course, now you've got Amber's lawyer that coming out basically saying, well, the jury must have been easily led by social media. Um, and this is not right. You know, they've, you know, they must have looked at um, social media. Well, firstly, it shows that, that, well, that's what they did. 
but also how utterly disrespectful this is to the jury who have spent six weeks of their life in a very public trial. Apparently they only got paid $30 a day, which to me isn't covers hardly anything of so you know six weeks of their life thirty dollars a day uh sitting in probably you know a stuffy courtroom um with probably an element of fear as well of the fact that you know the way things have kind of been going you know and the fact that you know you've got two very high profile people with very strong fan bases so you know there's an element of of that as well. So for, for her, uh, her lawyer, and then now, and also Amber saying that they would have been influenced by social media when they are told not to look at social media. Again, you're, this is guessing for a start, you know, you don't know for sure, but also how disrespectful and basically saying, well, then the justice system doesn't work. Now I'm absolutely betting that if she'd have won, none of this would be coming out. It'll be like, oh, the jury, the jury come to the best decision, the right decision, you know, and none of this would have been being said right now, you know, but because she didn't win, because the jury didn't believe her, she's now coming out on the attack, which is now what we're seeing, narc revenge. She lost. The people don't believe her. She's lost in the court of public opinion. So now she's basically coming out and attacking people on social media, which, you know, is against freedom of speech. Now, I don't don't get me wrong. I am not in agreement with anyone who issues death threats to her or her child or, or anything incredibly derogatory in that sense, because at the end of the day, you don't need to be doing that to get your point across. You know, when we do these videos, it's like they're not hateful. They're not nasty. They're factual and they are just an opinion. But I'm very mindful of i i don't say anything even regarding megan i don't say anything that attacks them you know because to me that's there's no point in that because the way i look at this is amber's very unwell there's there's clearly some issues here and what she needs to be doing is is really assessing where she went wrong uh the fact that she's also got a daughter so she really should be focusing on her daughter right now um, you know, bearing in mind she put this statement out, she was going to step back from everything and just focus on her on her daughter and being a mum. And, uh, and and of course, the, name, the next thing we know, she's doing these interviews. But it's the fact that social media seems to be, in the court of public opinion, it, most people are on Johnny's side. There's a huge, you know, because they, 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 they hear and they see with their own eyes and they're pretty intelligent people so they can see everything else. This is nothing to do with, you know, the, the fact that we've had these, say we've had these highlights and they might have missed out some things. We saw what the jury saw. We saw what the judge saw and we saw what the lawyers saw. Johnny had a chance to put his point across and so did Amber. And in fact, at times it felt that actually Amber got a lot more leeway than Johnny did, in my opinion. Um, so she had ample time and so did her lawyers to cross-examine, to question anything that come out um, so they had all that ample time. So now you've got Elaine saying, oh, well, there was all this evidence that was held back that was put through to the, the UK trial. And they keep reiterating the UK trial, which was completely different. Firstly, it was against the Sun newspaper, Dan Wooten. It wasn't against Amber. She was called in as a witness. The fact that actually there was a lot of evidence on Johnny's side was actually wasn't allowed through. The fact is that one of the things that the judge said, well, if she gave all this money to the UCL, uh, UCL, ACLU, get that right, um, and the, uh, I forget the other one, um, that she can't be a gold digger, but yet it's come out that she actually pledged, um, but didn't actually, hasn't actually given that money at all. Um, she's also staying in a, in a while the, tr the, the trial was going on, she was staying in this huge, like, mansion, which was about something like $250,000 a month to stay in, and yet she's pleading poverty. Um, you know, so this kind of aspect of, you know, or, you know, I've not been able to lead a normal life and I've not been able. But then there's there's various inter I I videos up until the trial, up until this all started where she is leading a normal life. You know, and actually in the court of public opinion, when that, that op ed come out and all these statements come out, the, the so social media turned against Johnny a lot of the time. It was only when the tapes were released of 
the the where everyone could hear the way amber was that that's when it started to change now to me that's factual evidence these aren't doctored you know they are evidence of her behavior and that's what she didn't like she didn't like the fact that people were starting to change their opinion of her. So that's why she's gone out. Now we have someone like Eve Barlow, who apparently is her, is supposed to be a journalist, um, who is apparently her partner. Um, and he, she reminds me of, of Omid Scobie. She's almost like, again, like her flying monkey, uh, does all her dirty work for her. She's the one that goes on the attack and has done nothing but attack Johnny since the trial. Johnny's gone on just to, to lead his life going on tour with his with his friend Jeff and you know and just you know just really trying to just focus on himself and his children and, and what have they done they consistently pick up everything he does every time he's put a statement out they 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 bring it up and they attack it and again come back to this this is a sad day for women no it's not you don't speak for all women you don't you don't speak for me and I'm pretty sure you don't speak for anybody else you can speak for yourself but that's it you know this whole thing with this Me Too movement is not just about women, it's about men. And this has shown that men do get abused by women. So, of course, now you've got this new interview coming out with Amber, which I think the full interview is today. But this snippet has come out. And again, she reiterates that, well, I can understand why the jury believed him because he's a larger than life character. You know, it's no, we all saw we all saw the same thing. We're not the jury. But we all saw the same footage. The jury saw the same footage. And apparently, from what I can gather, the clincher was the fact that she did not pay that charity money. She lied. So if you can lie about something that big, it then brings into question anything else in your character. So if you can lie about that, what else are you lying about? You know, when you lie about TMZ, what else are you lying about? That's why she lost, because she lied and she wasn't believed. But in true narcissist fashion, they can't have that. We cannot have that I'm not believed. So now, and she's creating herself to look far worse, in my opinion, because now she's coming out and doing these, these interviews. But again, the media, for some reason, seem to be so terrified of backing a man, you know, backing Johnny Depp. Because I tell you now, if it had come out that it was true, do not think for one second that social media wouldn't have turned on him. They absolutely would have done. He still maybe would have had some of his fans. But for the most part, social media, especially women, would have turned on him. You know, because some did before it was all these tapes come out. You know, so... This whole attitude of, well, you know, I can understand why the jury believed, you know, because there was all this, you know, he's such a popular person and he's, he's got such a huge fan base. And, you know, it's like you're treating us all like idiots, like we can't actually think for ourselves that we got to be swayed by the fact that he's a celebrity. I'm sorry, but there are plenty of celebrities out there that have been accused of things and it's found to be true. And then they're no longer popular. You know, a classic example, Mel Gibson. You know, when Mel Gibson got found to be uh, physically abusive to his, uh, I think it was his wife at the time, you know, he was blacklisted from Hollywood for a long time and people were literally done with him. And he was a very loved kind of character. You know, when you look at Lethal Weapon, you know, he was at the kind of pinnacle point in his, you know, his career. He'd done really, he was doing really well for himself. And it changed overnight because of that. So it would have done for Johnny too, you know. So she's hating the fact that he's now going to be very successful again. You know, I think, you know, apparently there's rumours that pirates are wanting him back. Um, you know, there's he's got something lined up with Tim Burton. You know, he's got uh, Robert Downey Jr. backing him and wanting him in the new Sherlock Holmes. Um, you know, and obviously then the stuff with her Aquaman movie is under threat because... Um, you know, I mean, there's rumours, always rumours circulate whether she's been cancelled from Ackerman or she's actually had everything reduced. Um, who knows? So this is what she's got now. So all she's doing now is this desperate attempt to get people to believe her. But actually, it's going to backfire because she's looking very bitter. She is coming across, you can see in her body language, she's not being honest. She's very deflective in her answers. Um, 
And this is not conducive behaviour of, in my opinion, of someone that has suffered the level of abuse that she's stating she's suffered. You know, she doesn't, you know, even look, there isn't even like looking upset. Now, a video circulated not long ago where she, uh, apparently she was with her sister Whitney in the car and the date was actually, I think, the same day her divorce settlement come through. And there's her and Whitney, they're literally partying in the car, playing, you know, with this music playing. And I think it was uh, Justin Bieber's um, I'm Not Sorry or, 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 or Sorry or, or I'm Not Sure Exactly What It Is. But basically, you know, just having a great time. And this is like when she's got divorced, because obviously she come away with all this money. She come away, I think, with the Land Rover and other things at the time, you know doesn't really show someone that's actually gone through what she's allegedly gone through you know when she's sitting there kind of partying in the car with her sister like she's the, the, like the happiest day of her life you know when you've gone through apparently what you've gone through so here you can see that this was the day of the divorce and this was on their Instagram, but they obviously she took this down. So sadly, the jury weren't able to actually have this brought in. But somebody found this because they screen grabbed it. But this is literally the day of the divorce. Now, looking at this behavior, considering she has said that she suffered with panic attacks, anxiety, depression. Um, and this is her and her sister celebrating in the car after getting the, this divorce and the settlement that, that she got. Um, I mean, let me know what you think, guys. You know, this is doesn't doesn't really come across, does it, as somebody uh, who has gone through uh, the type of things that she says she's gone through. But this just goes to show you the way that she performed in front of the jury to actually what she is like behind the camera, behind the scenes. Um, this is the real Amber. Um, so, yeah. And then obviously the other footage, you know, the the tapes that have come out of her trying to set him up in a hotel room, uh, telling him to come and hug her. And, you know, and she, after the restraining order was was put in, you know, so there's all these things that are really just misaligned with her. Um, her story, you know, because, it, you know, in my opinion, it is a story. So I just think, you know, when we look at kind of narcissism and, you know, and a lot of people have said to me, you know, why do narcissists behave this way? You know, why is it that some just let go and some hang on? It's because of their own sense of self-importance, their own ego. When a narcissist is done with you is because they've exhausted everything that they can get from you and they stop caring I mean, not that they ever really care in, about you, but they stop caring about anything that you can you can give them. They're done. Um, they either see you as just very weak and um, and they just don't want anything to do with you, or they found a new mark and they move on. Um, now, when a narcissist isn't done with you, that's when they try to hoover you back in again. And this is why you see her very much gaslight him and try to, you know, please tell me you love me. Do you still love me? You know, she needs to hear that from him because then when what you'll notice is when you hear those video, those that um, those recordings, when she kind of gets that answer from him, she then changes the way that she goes from kind of almost begging, pleading to kind of then getting kind of almost more assertive and go on the attack again because she has to have that control. As soon as she recognises she's got that control back, then she's like, yeah, okay, I don't need to do any more now. You know, so this is what it is. She's she's lost control of a situation. She, I believe she honestly thought she was going to go into that courtroom, she was going to lie, uh, give the best performance she's ever given, albeit that it was an awful performance, and be believed. But she wasn't. And she wasn't prepared for that. So now it's kind of like, right now, what can I do? So I'm going to send Elaine out there to say all this stuff about the UK court case. And I'm going to, you know, and there's lots of stuff that's come out about that, you know, and but that hasn't worked. So, OK, so now that hasn't worked. I'm now going to come out and do it myself. And I'm now going to come out and basically blame everybody else. Um, you know, I don't blame the jury, um, but they must have been influenced by him. Well, then that's kind of blaming them in a way. But you can't have it both ways. You can't have the court of public opinion on your side in the beginning attacking Johnny Depp. Um, and that's OK. But now the tables have turned and people are seeing you for who you really are. Um, you don't like it. And now, oh, the public are wrong. Well, 
Love, this is freedom of speech. You lie and you get seen to lie, people are going to call you out on it. You know, and that's just tough cookie, I'm afraid. You know, this is the consequences of your behaviour. But in a way, like we've seen with Megan, when you are a narcissist that is very much in the public eye, you can't hide. You might think you can, but eventually you start to get found out. People start to see it. And that's why you, you're having all this stuff with Megan and Harry is because now they're sort of out there and they're showing who they are. And I think the Oprah interview really was the clincher when people started to go, wow, OK. These are two people that have wanted privacy, but yet they're going to go on Oprah. Hmm. You know, and so it's the same with Amber. I think she's been found out. She's she now knows it and she doesn't like it. So we're going to see, I'm guessing, a few more interviews by her. Um, and, you know, I, I think the next thing will be, I'm sure she'll do a book about it or, you know, she'll do something. We're not, she's not done with this yet because, again, she needs this narc supply. She needs the attention. So she's not going to get it in Hollywood because Hollywood are pretty much what I would gather done with her. I would say if she is in Aquaman, that's probably going to be the last film, big film that she's ever going to be in for a long, long time. Um, and she is going to hate the fact that Johnny is going to now go on to be very successful and it's going to bother her. I personally, I know Johnny has said that he's not in it for the money, but I think that she needs to learn a lesson here. I think if he lets her off this money, um, I think the very least he should do is say, don't pay me, pay the ACLU, pay the other one. Give them the money that you said you were going to you were going to give them in the first place. I, I think, in my opinion, it would be wrong to let her off. Um, it's not about making someone suffer, but there has to be consequences. You can't say you're poor or you're or you're struggling, but then you fork out, I don't know, one point two million for a property or, you know, you drive around in on, you know, she was seen getting getting in a private jet, you know, it doesn't it doesn't track you know so to me i think it would be a mistake if he said don't bother with paying me the money it's fine i think he should like i say say do you know what you don't have to pay me but i want proof that you've paid it paid to those charities that you said you were going to pay and you took the money because she did she took the money you know that's the bottom line here she took that seven million um and she spent it on herself and yet, you know, she's doing all of these other things and yet she's still not paid, you know, to sick children um, or people that have been abused, you know. And I think that's that really does show the type of character that she is. So as always, you know, let me know what you think in the comments, guys. You know, have you had an experience like this with a narcissist? You know, have you dealt with somebody that has kind of really behaved in, in a kind of similar way where they've just not wanted to let things go, you know, whether it be, all right, not in the sense of like a celebrity, but, you know, they've gone round to other people trying to bad mouth you, make it that they're the victim and you're the one that's crazy. Because um, I certainly know that I've had that with clients, um, you know, and the way I view that is hopefully keep your circle tight, you know, and the best thing to do is when you get strong enough and you are strong enough to talk about your experience is go to these people and say, no, look, this is this is what happened. Because in my opinion, people that really know you, um, you know, they might initially feel swayed by the narc because they can be charming. And, you know, but if you kind of get in there and go, look, this is what they've been doing. And actually, this is what happened and, and be open and honest, um, you know, taking accountability, because that is the thing that I think she's done where she's gone really wrong is that she's taken zero accountability for anything. It is everybody else's fault. Johnny's fault, the jury, the judge, you know, social media, the fans. It's everybody else's fault. Um, and she's not been accountable for anything. So, yeah. So let me know what you think in the comments, guys. Sorry this video is a bit long, but I felt I wanted to do a bit a longer one because I'm not doing any more videos this week apart from the live with Trev. So as always, thank you to everybody who has bought me a cup of tea. You are amazing. So the people that are supporting me here, you know, being amazing in the comments, um, you know, you know how much I love and respect you. And here's to, you know, we're on our way to 16,000 subscribers here who blows my mind that these, the you know, there, there are people that are really enjoying this channel. So like I say, thank you. Um, I love and respect all of you. Um, and I will see you Friday. Um, and I'm going to go and enjoy my birthday. So, yeah.
So thanks, guys. And I love you from me, from Arthur, from everybody else. Mwah. Have a great week. Bye.